The recipe I'm sharing with you today is called lemon bread, but I'll go ahead and tell you up front, it's much more like a cake, much more like a lemon cake. But I found the recipe in this cookbook, Dining with Pioneers. It was first published in 1981, and it's a compilation of recipes from Tennessee. People sent them in. It's a really thick book, a really great one. And actually, one of my dear friends, Gail Larson, gifted me with this book. She was downsizing her cookbooks. She used to own a restaurant uh, in Pennsylvania, and she moved down here and become a dear friend of ours. Uh, she used to teach the girls clogging. She was one of their clogging instructors. So she was kind enough to share a lot of her old cookbooks with me, and this was one of them, and it's a really great one. I'm not sure if you can still find it or not, um, but if you can, maybe you could search online. But it's Dining with Pioneers. It's a great cookbook, and that's where the recipe come from. It was submitted by Patsy Carter. Now, when I made first made this um, recipe out of here, I got on this kick about 2018, I guess, of, of making sweet breads, kind of breads that you would make in a loaf pan. And I had just left my job that I've had for many, many years at the college and went to a new job. And that new job, for the first time in so many years, I had the opportunity every day to come home to eat dinner. When I was at the college, I only got 30 minutes and it was a further distance away, so there was no way I could come home. So I ate my dinner, what they would call lunch, there at, at, at this college every day. But once I changed jobs, I had that opportunity to come home. And during that time, probably it started off with me making, I, I have a Christmas bread I make at Christmas time. And probably that was what I enjoyed eating it. And then I thought, well, what other kind of breads can I make? So I went through this whole whole process that for that um, first part of the new year in 2019 of making these sweet breads that kind of are in a loaf pan, easy to make, easy to whip up. Some of them savory and some of them sweet, but really good to eat for my dinner. If they were, you know, savory, I would put cream cheese or eat cheese with them, or even if they were sweet, I'd eat cheese with them, but maybe some fruit and maybe some chopped up vegetables like carrots or something, and then that just made the perfect quick meal for me to come home and then go back to work. So that's how I started making this recipe. And this is one that I, I, during that time, I made some of the tried and true ones that I'd always made, but then I was looking for new ones. So I had this great cookbook that Gail had gifted me and I found this lemon bread. And it's it, we've been making it ever since I have been. And it's a really good bread or cake kind of for this time of the year, you know, when the kind of in February and everything's dreary outside and you're thinking about spring and thinking about summer. Well, it just has that great bright flavor of citrus, of the lemon, that really makes it perfect for this time of the year. So as always, I'll put the link to the recipe in the description below so you can go over there and find it uh, on my website. But I'll go over just quickly the ingredients. So it's one half cup of shortening, one cup of sugar, two eggs beaten, one and one fourth cup plain flour, that's all purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of salt, one half cup of milk, a half a cup of finely chopped nuts, grated rind and juice of one lemon, and one fourth cup sugar. Now those nuts, I think in the original recipe, that uh, Patsy submitted, it suggested pecans or walnuts. And those are great and they would be great in it, but I kind of prefer almonds. I like almonds a lot. So this almonds kind of go really well with the lemon, I think in this one. So I use almonds, but pecans, walnuts, even black walnuts would be really good uh, in the recipe. So just whatever nut that you prefer. So it's really simple to put together. And now I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I have the shortening in and I'm gonna add the the sugar, and we're going to cream that together. Now I'm going to add the eggs. mix well. Now I'm going to sift together the flour. Whoops, left a little bit. 
and the baking powder and the salt. Now we're going to alternately add the flour and the milk, mixing after each addition. Now that we've got that mixed in, we're going to add our nuts and our lemon zest. Now that we've got all that combined, we're ready to put it in the pan. So I'm using parchment paper in my pan just because I think it's easy to, to pull it out to get the uh, finished cake or bread out. But you could certainly grease, I think the recipe says to grease and flour your loaf pan. So either way will be just fine. We're going to bake it at 350 for about 50 minutes or until done. You'll just need to keep an eye on it in your oven, especially for the first time, to see how long it takes for you. The lemon zest really makes it smell so good, so fresh. I wish you could smell it. So now I'm going to pop it in the oven, and once it's out, I'll show you the last step to do before you get to eat it. So I just got the cake out of the oven, so now it's time to make the glaze that goes on top. So that's where that the lemon juice from the one lemon comes in, and then also the one-fourth cup of sugar. So we're just going to mix them together. Now, since I use parchment paper, it's pretty easy to, to get the cake out. I'm going to go ahead and take the parchment paper off. And do it without breaking it. So now the next direction from the recipe is to poke holes all in the cake. And whenever I poke holes, we have these great um, kebab skewers that I just like, I like to use them. So we're just going to poke some holes all in the cake. And then you just pour the glaze over it. Try to try to go pretty slow. I think I need to give it another stir. The sugar doesn't completely dissolve in there, and then that leaves. What happens is once it kind of hardens on the cake, and you need to do this when the cake is warm. I don't think I said that, so I just got it out of the oven. But when you first, um, when you do pour it over it, what happens is it ends up leaving those little sugar crystals, kind of give it a really nice crunch. So I'm going to give it a few minutes, or a little while at least, to kind of cool and let it soak in all that goodness. And then I'll cut a piece and show you how good it tastes. Okay, let's cut a piece and see, see what it tastes like. Well, I know it's going to be good. So you can see the kind of the almonds inside. I don't know if you can see the top or not, but it kind of, that little glaze kind of crunch, gives a little crunch up there on top.
Mm. Very good. Very lemony. So if you're a lemon fan, you're going to love this one. Mm. That burst of lemon is perfect for, for wanting spring to come on. Kind of freshness right in the middle of the winter. Really an easy cake to put together. And I like doing the little loaf pans because it seems like it's easier to eat up the cake and nothing goes to waste. You know, it just seems like it's more manageable, especially if you're um, a family of two or one or something like that. But even like for um, here at our house, Corey and Katie don't always like to eat sugar. So a lot of times it might just be me and Matt eating the cake. So I, I like that it's kind of, you use it up quickly. It's kind of the benefit of doing those little sweet breads in a, in a loaf pan like that. I hope you enjoyed seeing how to make lemon bread, which is really just lemon cakes, what it tastes like. It's very good if you try it. You can use whatever nut you want, but I think those almonds are especially good. If you've got a favorite kind of quick sweet bread like that, I hope you'll leave the recipe in the comments or tell us about it because I know it would be good too. And as always, I hope you'll keep dropping back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia.